Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're at the range with an AR-15. Oh boy, another AR-15 video. No, but wait, it's a little bit different, guys. Today I want to talk about how the AR-15 has evolved from just being a military service rifle into becoming America's rifle. The AR-15, of course, was developed by Eugene Stoner. You know the backstory. It was adopted by the U.S. military in the mid-1960s, continues on today in military service. But this rifle has gained a lot of traction in the shooting world because it's such an amazing rifle that is so versatile. Not only is it versatile in terms of what accessories you can put onto it, the modern versions with pick rails and things like that, and M-Lock and Key Mod and all the other uh, different attachment types they've come up with over the years, but also calibers have evolved with the rifle. So originally the rifle, when it was fielded by the military, was chambered in 5.56 NATO. We're all familiar with that, a 55 grain ball round. The military has stepped up to 62 grain rounds and, and even heavier rounds than that for uh, designated marksman's rifles and stuff like that. But the 5.56 has its limits. That little 223 bullet, which is a 22 caliber bullet, and I have one right here, just doesn't have a good ballistic coefficient. And I'm not going to get into all the science of ballistic coefficients and sectional density and things like that. I just want to talk about the rough numbers. No matter how you measure 5.56 slash 223 against other calibers that are available for the AR-15 now, like the 6.5 Grindle, the 6.5 Grindle is going to outperform it ballistically and terminally at every distance. And the further out you go, the more calibers like 6.5 Grindle start to shine. It'll buck the wind better, and it'll deliver more energy to the target downrange. Now, why is that important? For me, I like to hunt with gas guns. I like AR-15s. And it'll love, folks love shooting with bolt actions, hunting deer with Grandpap's bolt action, their old Model 70 or like Winchester, or, you know, Model 700 Remington. For me, I've always loved and enjoyed hunting with the AR-15 or any other self-loading rifle. So I've been on this quest for years trying to find the perfect caliber that fits into a standard AR-15 that isn't an AR-10. The AR-10 obviously is a, a larger version of this rifle. It's bigger, it's heavier, and can handle calibers like 308, 65 Creedmoor and stuff like that. I want a small lightweight rifle like a standard AR-15, but that has more punch. And that's why I'm going to talk about the 6.5 Grindle in today's video. Many times when we go out into the field to hunt things like pigs down south, we'll take a rest similar to this one, which is lightweight and easy to you know, drag around with you while you're running around the woods, and set up and gives you a nice stable rest to shoot at extended ranges. This one is manufactured by Spec Rest. We did a video on one of their bigger units several years ago, but this is manufactured by Spec Rest, and this is called the React Rest. And it's set up so that you can quickly make adjustments to it and fire from the standing, kneeling, sitting, the tripod legs come all the way out. And uh, the claws that you see here are made of some sort of very rigid, malleable material. So you can squeeze it and then press your rifle down into it and squeeze those arms and that'll hold it securely in place to make adjustments over on the other side here, we have a wheel, and I can loosen this right here. And you can see how the spec rest goes up and down. And you can adjust the tension so that you can make those adjustments without having to turn the knob in case you're changing um, you know, your point of aim very quickly. The same with the left-right movement. You have a, a knob here in the front. You can control the tension on that and you can swing it to wherever you want. If you want to lock it down, just crank down on all those, and it just locks down and holds the rifle for you. So now you can get on the gun, kind of press into it, and engage targets with a little bit more stability at extended ranges. Let's go ahead and load up 10 more rounds of the Steelcase Wolf ammunition. I kind of like putting it back here a little bit further so I can press into it and we'll shoot at Mr. Challenge target at 200 yards. It's kind of a cool setup and then when you Take your rifle out, you just pull it out, and you can fold up the legs. This one has carbon fiber legs on it, 
and uh, it's adjustable to height to my height, which is six foot four. It goes up quite a bit. I've shortened it for myself, so even if you're seven foot tall, this uh, React rest is going to work well for you. But we're going to continue to test it. You'll notice that we've used other rests here on the channel. Um, there's a Coffee Jaeger rest that you'll see us using when we do our suppressor meter testing. Uh, so this is another alternative that we're testing and playing with, and we'll give you more feedback as we use the rests more and more. I'm just going to touch upon the ballistics of the 5.56 or 223 versus the 6.5 Grindel. I don't want to get off into the weeds too much because it's actually a pretty boring conversation. But what I want to stress is that the 6.5 Grindel at every range from the muzzle out to 500 yards and beyond outperforms the 223 5.56 at every turn, at every distance. Okay, So it significantly increases the power of this rifle at greater distance than what would be normally achieved with the original 223 chambering of the AR-15. And yes, I know there were 222s chambered early on. So let's take a look at some of the data I have in my phone on a ballistics app from test data that I've gotten from rifles I've actually fired. This rifle has an 18-inch barrel. This test rifle uh, was used to come up with the ballistics data for the 123 grain Grindel load that we're going to talk about now. So at, uh, at the muzzle, it had a muzzle velocity of 2,450 uh, 2, feet per second with an energy of 1,639 foot-pounds, okay? Contrast that against a standard M193 ball round that at the muzzle would be going out of a 16-inch barrel. It would be going right at uh, 3,000 feet per second and had 1,108 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Black Hills came out with a round that was a 77 grain round, I believe, and it's a Black Hills TMK 556. It had or has a bullet velocity at the muzzle of 2,700 feet per second, 2,730 feet per second, with a muzzle energy of 1,280 foot pounds of energy. So going back to the 6.5 Grindel, once we get out to 500 yards, First of all, what's interesting to note is that at 500 yards, we have 67 inches of bullet drop with the 123 grain bullet. It's also still going 1,691 feet per second at 500 yards. And it has 781 foot-pounds of energy. Taking a look at the M193 ball round, at 500 yards, it has 64 inches of bullet drop but now at 500 yards, the velocity has gone from 3,000 feet per second down to 1,440 feet per second. So it's shedding that, that velocity very quickly. That's because of the reduced uh, ballistic coefficient or the bullet is less aerodynamic. And it has a energy of 254 foot pounds. Okay, if we go over to the Black Hills TMK at 500 yards, that 77 grain bullet is still doing 1,776 feet per second with an energy of 539 foot-pounds. So if we take a look at a really efficient 223 versus a standard M193 55 grain ball round that most people use and compare that to a Grindel, just one load, there are better performing Grindel cartridges than what I've quoted here, but the Grindel at every turn at every distance is trumping the 5.56 slash 223. So the whole point of that discussion was to show that this cartridge really extends the effective range of this rifle without adding any weight to the gun other than the barrel length. Uh, typically, you want to shoot a 6.5 Grindel, uh, an optimal length would be 18 inches. The shorter you go with the barrel, the less efficient this, this cartridge becomes. But for hunting, this thing, I have dropped Axis Buck deer with it, and it leaves a vicious wound. I can't hunt legally in my state with 223, but I have taken deer with 224 Valkyrie down in Texas, and the difference in the wound, looking at the internals of the animal when we were cleaning them, there's a huge difference between a 224 Valkyrie wound and a 6.5 Grindel wound, and the 6.5 Grindel did a lot more damage internally based upon my experience. So that gives you an idea of the differences in power while you're maintaining the exact same weight and functionality and ergonomics of a standard lightweight AR-15.
Let's talk about the rifle that we're shooting this afternoon. This is an ADM rifle. Copper Custom has carried ADM for years. They offer great ambi lowers for AR-15s, and they make a really solid product in general. We, myself and my business partner at Copper, Dave, we both fell madly in love with the 6.5 Grindel when we started playing with it and starting to learn more about it, and we became converts. We strongly believe that the 6.5 Grindel is the best hunting caliber for the standard AR-15 currently on the market. Now, some people are gonna say 6.8 SPC is better. They're neck and neck, and we'll probably do a video on that comparing 6.5 Grindel to 6.8, and I would agree. They're very, very similar in ballistic performance. The 6.5 Grindel edges the 6.8 out at the further distances, but it's just marginal, and it can be made up for using different types of bullets. So they're pretty fairly evenly matched. But the 6.5 Grindel, again, smokes the 5.56 in terms of performance. So this rifle, we went to ADM and said, hey guys, these are the specs. Can you build a rifle for us to sell at Copper? And they did, and this is it. And you can only get it through Copper Custom currently. So this rifle I have finished in green. It has an 18 inch Criterion barrel in it with a one and eight twist. It is a match grade stainless steel barrel. You can see that we have the uh, M-Lock rail on it. So you have the pick rail across the top, then you have the ability to put M-Lock uh, accessories on either side or on the bottom. We have the Ambi charging handle with nice big hooks that you can easily grab from either side of the rifle. Right here, we have our magazine release, and then we have a bolt stop bolt release on the, on the right-hand side of the rifle. And this is one of the features I really love about ADM. So if I pull the bolt to the rear, and I push up on that, it locks the bolt to the rear. Then with my firing hand, oops, my little rust is coming out. Then with my firing hand, I have access to the magazine release where I can just reach up here, hit that lever, and chamber around. Over on the other side of the rifle, you'll see we have a much larger bolt stop bolt release. It's a big old paddle that's very easy to get to. And then of course we have the uh, Ambi magazine release right there as well. And we have a selector lever on both sides of the rifle for those left-handed shooters. Or for people that are right-handed, just like using the selector lever on the other, si other side. Sometimes I'll find myself flipping up that lever uh, using my index finger uh, on the right-hand side of the receiver. So overall, the build quality of these rifles is through the roof. And the performance of this gun has been spectacular. We've been testing this rifle now, gosh, almost six months. It's done quite a bit of shooting with it and I really love it. On top of it, we have US optics, a 10 power optic. So it goes from uh, 1.8 power all the way up to 10 power. It's a nice, small, handy little optic uh, available at Copper Custom when they're in stock. And then on top of that, we have a Midwest Industries mount that's holding the scope to the rifle. So overall, I really like the configuration of this rifle. It's a really slick shooting gun. One of the other reasons I really like the 6.5 Grindel is the fact that there is affordable practice ammunition that's available on the market. Not only is it affordable, it's pretty accurate. And it's even more surprising that it's a steel case. It's imported by Wolf, it's manufactured in Russia, and it doesn't cost much more than 7.62 by 39. It's very competitively priced and it's really affordable practice ammunition for the rifle. And as you're gonna see here in a, in a moment, I'm able to hit a prairie dog target at 200 yards using this ammunition. On the end of the rifle, I forgot to mention, I have a Griffin Armament Explorer 300 suppressor. And let's see, I like using the little 10 round magazines because this is a hunting rifle for me and I'm going for a smaller footprint, a, a, slinner, a slimmer profile. And so we'll load up 10 rounds here. I am shooting off a rest and supporting the rear of the rifle with the bag. And the reason I'm doing that is my right rotator cuff is completely blown out right now. And for me to be chicken winging and being prone and close to the bench causes me a lot of pain. So I'm using rests quite a bit lately, if you're wondering why. Uh, it's, it's until I get that resolved, it's quite painful actually to, to shoot rifles, unfortunately. All right, so let's go after that little prairie dog. I have the scope dialed back to right around nine power. This, this thing has a Geisley trigger in it. And Jason and I agree, 
the Geisley triggers, especially this one, are too light for my tastes. When I'm shooting off a rest like this, it has zero over travel. It has a very light break at under four pounds or under, and it's really easy to accidentally bump fire the gun. So I prefer a slightly heavier trigger. They have a combat trigger, Geisley, which is about the right weight for my personal preference. But I've, I've left the factory Geisley trigger in here. Uh, these are the triggers that would ship with the guns uh, from copper. A lot of people prefer that light trigger. I'm weirdo because I like a heavier trigger. We just got done firing 20 rounds through this rifle with the Explorer 300 Griffin Armament Cannon on the end, and this thing is too hot to touch. If I grabbed it right now, it would instantly give me a third degree burn. Coltec makes a suppressor bag. It's used for storage of your silencers, or in this case, it's used to help me to get my hot suppressor into a rifle case because I may not want to wait around for the can to cool before I leave the range. This bag can hold hot suppressors, and it's a very handy little item, and you can find them over at the Coltec website. I have 20 rounds of the Steelcase Wolf loaded into a Bushmaster 6.8 SPC magazine. I use these mags in my ACR, which has a 6.8 conversion barrel on it. But I just wanted to show you that many times we'll just substitute 6.8 magazines for 6.5 Grindel magazines when we need to. I'm just going to go from 100 to 150 to 200, walking back and forth, having a little bit of fun here, dial my magnification back. And what's really nice about the 6.5 Grindel is the recoil impulse isn't all that much more than a 5.56. It's really, really mild given the improved performance ballistically. So it shoots really, really well. Now, what I will say is like most AR-15s that use a uh, traditional baffled can with the extra back pressure that can produces, you get a lot of gas in your face. And that's true with any AR-15 that you put a standard baffled suppressor on. The only way to avoid that, in my experience, is to use a no back pressure can like OSS. But I love the Explorer line of, of cans because they do a really good job at suppression. They're small, handy, and you'll find I will hunt with them uh, occasionally. That's why I have one on this particular rifle. To sum things up with the 6.5 Grindel, it's one of those calibers that really does a great job of extending the utility of the AR-15 rifle. If you're an AR-15 lover like myself and you're a little bit tired of 223, you wanna try something a little bit different, making your rifle into a 6.5 Grindel is a simple barrel and bolt swap. So it's part of that whole modularity thing going on with the AR-15. In this case, we have a purpose-built rifle from ADM. Again, it's available over at Copper Custom. We have different colors that would be available, but it's a fun, pleasant caliber to shoot. And for me, it's my preferred hunting caliber. There's a good number of different loads available on the market now. We have the cheap stuff we've been shooting here all afternoon, the steel case stuff, which is highly affordable. And you can get some excellent ballistic tip rounds out there, again, for hunting. So it's a great plinker, practice rifle, and a great hunting rifle. So if you're interested, check out 6.5 Grindel. You may find that you like it as much as I do. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below in the video description. Please click that link and consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Also, while you're watching this video, there's a little video player underneath it. You have a join button. Click that join button and read about some of the perks and consider becoming part of our YouTube family right here again on YouTube. And last but not least, swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support and we'll talk to you soon.